Welcome back everyone. Wow, what a great competition in the men's 2024 Olympic individual event floor and pommel finals. Carlos Yula won the first ever gold medal for the Philippines in Olympic gymnastics history in the floor exercise. Reese McClinigan won the first ever medal for Ireland in Olympic gymnastics on the pommel horse and it was gold. Steven Nedarazic from the US earned the bronze medal handling the intense pressure and hitting a great routine when it counted. Along with Carlos and Reese, they've solidified their place in Olympic history earning these medals. Here are in-depth analysis of all three athletes on their medal earning events to show how great and incredible their gymnastics is. And today we're gonna to analyze the floor routine of Carlos Yulo. I believe Carlos to be the cleanest tumbler and the world's most aesthetic gymnast in the air at this time. We're gonna look at some side-by-side -side comparisons and take a closer look at each of his tumbling passes. When Carlos tumbles, it never seems he doubts if he's going to hit his pass or not. To me, it seems his focus is on how well to do each tumbling pass and if he's going to stick the landing or not. I see this dynamic in the best gymnasts in the world no matter what routine they are doing. At such a high level of performance where the field of performers is so good, it often comes down to who has the best day or who does their routine the best on that day. With Carlos's high focus on these small details, I believe it gives him a much better chance to have a great routine on any given day. Carlos has changed up his routine from time to time and I'm curious what he's going to put together before the Olympics. He does have a lot of skills and passes to choose from. Let's take a closer look at some of those passes right now. His most common mount has been a double layout full out or a double layout with a full twist. His execution is beautiful in the air and he does this skill very easily. I believe he can easily add one or even two more twists to the skill doing a double double or even a triple double eventually. Even on takeoff his form is very tight and clean. He spots the floor after his first flip and starts his full twist. It may be hard to see here but he sees the floor and he is three quarters into his twist. With a half flip left he's completed his full twist and stylishly opens his arms out to the side to prepare for landing. Now he's thinking stick the landing at this point. This is a side-by-side -side comparison with Olympic champion Alexei Nimov. Alexei is considered one of the cleanest tumblers of his time. Both have clean takeoffs. They both actually spot the ground here. Carlos has completed more twist at this point and he stylishly places his hands by his side and he completes his twist and he's squared off for the landing very early and that gives him more time to focus on sticking. And even when Carlos doesn't stick, it's normally just a small hop anyway. I would say Carlos sticks his skill more than half the time. Here's a look at some of his front tumbling. A double twisting layout front to a layout front. Here's a high powerful hurdle, really clean and tight form in the air. He spots the floor right here in preparation for his punch into his layout front. And his layout front just soars with his arms to the side and elegance. Very nice. This is a back layout with one and a half twists into a double twisting layout front flip. I don't see him use this as often as he's upgraded his routine. Here's his back two and a half twisting layout punch straight into his two and a half twisting layout front flip. Wow, look how clean he is in the air. The challenge with these combinations is to get the proper timing and bounce after the two and a half twisting back to punch directly into the two and a half twisting front. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison with Kenzo Shirai, who's regarded as one of the best twisters in gymnastics. Carlos starts his twist slightly earlier. They finish their twist almost identical. I would say Kenzo has completed slightly more of his twist at this point, but they both spot the ground and set up for their punch into their next skill. They both connect to the floor well, but they also have their feet slightly crossed for a slight form deduction, and they land very similar. Here's his piked double front granny out, or piked double front with a half turn. He does this skill so easily and with such great form. Just really nice to watch. Now he adds his double pike front in an upgraded combination. Look at the distance he travels here. It's like a pole vaulter traveling across the floor at a very high rate and sticking his feet into the floor and launching upward. Carlos is very well known for his focus on controlling his landings. His legs are tight together and he pulls his arms into his body to accelerate his twist. Here he spots the floor in preparation to punch the floor before his double pike. So cool, beautifully done. All through this skill, his legs and feet are glued together and he has such great timing and control. He does make this look easy. Even on this landing, he tries to move his feet as little as possible. This is a layout front full into a two and a half twisting layout front. In multiple twisting front tumbling, it's very common to go off axis like this due to the way the gymnasts torque their arms to accelerate their twist. This is a side by side of Kenzo and Carlos. Carlos does a layout full where Kenzo does a tucked full. This full twisting front simply sets up and accelerates the twist in multiple twisting frontward skills. There's a lot of technique going on here. Their left arm is held out away from the body so they can wrap it in close to their body and accelerate their twisting. Neither one of these gymnasts go that high, but they spin incredibly fast. Here's a triple full for a side pass or a back flip with a triple twist. I would say he sticks this more than half the time. He does this from a round off and not a round off back handspring. The current generation is much more accepting of doing skills out of round offs. Really clean form here. Here's a long reach on his round off. 
Deep block angle, it's easy to over-rotate your flip and twisting skills, so a deeper block angle helps to stall the flip and twisting skills so you don't over-rotate. He opens up easily out of this triple full. This makes it no surprise that he sometimes does a three and a half twisting backflip for a dismount. This bumps up the value from a D to an E. Even this is pretty comfortable for him, as he also does a three and a half twisting backflip immediately punched to a branny or a front flip with a half twist. This is an upgraded combination. And so cool, he has such good form on this with his legs glued together throughout this whole sequence. Carlos has many skills and combinations to choose from when he constructs his floor routine. I look forward to seeing what he puts together for the Olympics. He is definitely a metal contender on the floor and really does some of the cleanest and most elegant tumbling in the world. Today we'll be analyzing the pommel horse skills of two-time world champion Irishman Reese McClinigan. Let's get started with Reese's mount. He does a back scissor to handstand with great technique. I show different versions to show how consistent he is with the skill. Good technique is to show swing to the handstand and not a press. And you want your hips to be very open and not piped. Reese swings very smoothly up to his handstand. In this comparison of Reese and Max, Reese has his hips much higher when he gets his second hand back on that pommel. Max moves a bit slower to the handstand but very controlled. He does open up his hips well not to appear to use strength. They both swing very well in real time. This is the best one I've seen Reese do. He has open hips and a straight body and he swings quickly straight up to the handstand. Here he moves on to multiple Russians on one pommel. I use this video of Reese because although he covers it up very well, he is struggling and adjusting much more than he normally does. Even so, he maintains decent form with only a small foot separation. He's a fighter. We can see in this version, both are smooth, flawless, and just flow so great. Reese's nice toe point stands out to me and gives much more elegance to every skill he does in his routine. Look how tight and controlled he is with very nice extension and distance from the horse. It looks like he could stay on that pommel all day long. When we compare Max Whitlock with Reese, we can see that he uses much more of a planche position where Reese leads more with his shoulders as he circles around. Both keep their chest down very well, have good distance from the horse, and maintain good push and balance throughout. Nice work. Now they both do the same Russian sequence, but this time between the pommels on the leather. There's more space to adjust your hands on the leather, but both have to swing much higher to clear their body over the pommels. Reese's fast swing helps create momentum to clear the horse and have nice extension, but a fast swing can get out of control a bit easier. Max has a slower, less momentum driven and tighter swing, but he controls his swing remarkably well. I did an analysis and comparison of Max Whitlock and Chow Quinn already, and I'll leave that link in the description for that video. You may find that very insightful to the style and technique of Max Whitlock. Reese has a really stretched front circle and he also has a lot of room between his hips and the pommel. Just like Max Whitlock, he's very clean and consistent with his one pommel work. If you look closely here, you can see his hand is up a bit more in the right image as this is one way gymnasts micro adjust to stay in such good balance during their swing. Because gymnasts swing so fast, it's difficult to see the small adjustments they are doing in real time to maintain solid balance. Reese's pommel horse routine lasts about 44 seconds and includes around 37 circles, give or take. It's a very long routine. Max Whitlock's routine swings generally slower and lasts about 48 seconds, but is made up of 35 circles, give or take. The longest routine I've seen is 1992 Olympic champion on pommel horse, Pai Gil Su, and his routine went on for 48 seconds just like Max's routine, but he had 37 circles as he swung faster also. I didn't count handstand skills or scissor work. This is a new skill for Reese and raises his difficulty. A bezego or a full back stockly on one pommel, but he doesn't look very comfortable on this skill yet, so I'm curious if he's going to put it in for the Olympics. Many athletes do the same trending skills, so it matters greatly who does them better as to set themselves apart from each other. Koi Young and Max Whitlock both show really consistent control in their handstand work, so who does it better? They both look exceptional to me. Max has a very solid, clean, and controlled swing that allows him to do incredibly difficult skills. His lack of toe point does stand out to me and change his overall look of his pommel horse work. Again, Max does so much one pommel work so comfortably and controlled, he never appears to struggle with his balance. Now with Reese. Of course, anything can happen in competition, but already to have so many recent successes on pommel horse gives Reese a lot of momentum, not only in his confidence, but also in how the judges and gymnastics world perceive him. And this does have an invisible positive value for him. A tattoo of the Olympic ring signifies his passion, pride, and commitment to his gymnastics. His Irish green wrist supports show his patriotism for his country. These athletes are fully invested in doing everything and giving everything they can to finish as high as possible in the Olympic Games. As always, I hope you enjoyed this analysis and got some value out of it. Feel free to like and subscribe as it helps me grow this channel, and feel free to leave a comment or any thoughts or suggestions of any other gymnasts you'd like to see analyzed. Until next time, all my best and rock on!
Today, I'll be analyzing the pommel horse skills and routine of world champion Steven Nedarazic. Let's get started with the analysis. First, look how low he squats with his very strong and high jump into his mount. This creates a lot of power to make the hop and turn all the way to the other side of the pommel horse in this hop full twisting scissor or McKulak. Now watch this little hand touch on the pommel. This is normal for this skill, and I believe it helps him square up his body and to be more consistent with this skill. Very nice. He moves into two pommel loops into a difficult double Russian or walk around on one pommel done very soft and with very clean form. Watch how fast his hands move and the accuracy of each hand placement to sustain solid support as he spins on the one pommel. It looks very comfortable for him. He's capable of doing a much more difficult 1080 walk around on one pommel, but I'm not sure if he's gonna use it in the finals. Here's a side-by-side -side with two-time Olympic pommel horse champion, Max Whitlock. He also does a 1080 Russian most of the time and he may add it in his routine in the finals. Now Steven moves into a very difficult full kier or a song. That's a long time to balance on one hand. The full kier or sewn is done with only one hand placement in one circle. He has very extended body position here. His right hand has to grab the pommel in reverse grip to prepare for the full turn on the one pommel. It's very odd to grab the pommel in this way. As the shoulders start to lean over and outside the pommel, his body turns and the arms and legs counterbalance with each other. He leads with his toes throughout most of the skill. He's very locked in with his arm locked close to his side, very clean and smooth. He is looking for that sweet spot of balance between leaning too far and not leaning enough. This is a full back Stockley or a bazugo done very clean. He gets his hand on the pommel very fast, so he must have very flexible wrists. He has a solid lean with his arm pushing down and locked close to his body. Now look at his arm. It's like a bull rider that moves his free hand around to help him maintain balance on the bull. He raises or lowers his hands to make micro adjustments in his balance as he turns on the pommel. Then he finishes this skill just as he would if he was doing a more normal basic stockley. Really great stuff. Now he moves into some one pommel work. This is two pommel circles into two back stockleys or back mores. In this skill, he has eight hand placements on one pommel, keeping very nice extension and form throughout and staying pretty high of the pommel. Very nice. Looking closer, he has good extension and pushes down on the pommel very well. Very extended with nice toe point here. He's very accurate with his hand placements to maintain good push on the pommel to complete this very nice combination. Here's a side by side with Olympic pommel horse champion Max Whitlock, who he'll see in the finals, doing a woo or a full travel across the horse while doing multiple Russian walk around swings. They are both uniquely clean and smooth in this woo travel. He has nice body extension and watches Steven keeps his chest facing the pommel horse the entire time throughout this skill. Beautiful form swinging very high above the horse. Now he travels long ways across the horse only on the leather and not touching the pommels at all. He pushes down with very good accuracy between the pommels here and reaches to the end of the horse maintaining very nice body position. Here's a side-by-side -side with world champion Reese McClinigan from Ireland doing a back savato across the horse. In this travel backwards, they alternate each hand placement from leather, pommel, leather. They look very similar here. Pommel, nice extension from both, back to the leather, into loops on the end. Steven ends with two pommel loops into a back stockley handstand with a half pirouette. Really clean and solid and having great endurance to have no struggle in his dismount. The top three pommel horse workers in the finals are Max, Steven, and Reese.